Like Athena, emerging from the head of Zeus and bringing courage into the world, I come bearing free stuff to all of the adventurous blenderers of the internet. Okay, that might be a bit of a grandiose introduction, just to say that I've added a free version to the ambient grunge node, but there you go. Along with that, there's also been some nice updates to the paid version, and I want to take a minute to talk about the EasyBPY project. So to start this off, let's talk about what's changed with the paid version of the ambient grunge node. First of all, the node works better on darker color inputs. This was an issue of the original version, since the grunge wouldn't really appear on a black surface, but now it does, which will make it more versatile. However, maximum detail is still better seen on brighter surfaces. The pattern of the mark details has also been adjusted to give it a more realistic splattering effect. It's mostly reminiscent of mud, and as you can see I've also tried to make sure it looks good up close as well as far away. It would be very easy to overdo the detail on the micro or macroscopic level, but I wanted to try and get a good balance of both. Ambient occlusion has also been better balanced, so the node can double up as an alternative to the regular AO node, except with fewer parameters solely for that effect. Also for the complex material makers out there, the muck and wear masks are now exposed as outputs. So you can take that data and use it in any way that you like. And to top this off, I've also added an extra demonstration scene with this collection of cubes and spheres. I found it very useful while trying to balance all the material values. Okay, so as I said, there's also now a free version available on the Gumroad page. You just need to click on free version and then enter zero in the price field to get it. And don't worry if you've already purchased the full version, I've made sure that your account has still been assigned access to the full version tier, since these different tiers are now a new addition to the product page. To demonstrate the differences, I've put this comparison scene together. On the left I have a material with both versions of the node. The free one is above and the paid one below, and you can immediately see that the free version has only one adjustable parameter, which is the mug level. The paid version below has much more than this. At the moment I have the paid version plugged into the principal shader, so you can see the detail being generated in the crevices on the right. If I swap the color output to the free version, the detail becomes a lot more simplified, but if we zoom in, you can still see some splattering where dirt accumulates. And of course I can increase the muck level to make this effect more intense. Taking a look inside the node group, we can see how it's been put together. We have our pattern generation in the upper left. If you want to change the texture coordinates being used, then you can do that up here by plugging a different option into the mapping node. A single noise texture is being used to get the muck pattern, while the paid version comes with a much more complex technique. But you can of course substitute this for whatever combination of nodes you like. It's essentially just building up a black and white mask, which will be combined with a separate color ramp, and then added to the base color input later. If you want to make the effect more prominent overall, then slide the black handle of this color ramp to the right, and you will see the pattern having a greater influence over the final result. If you want to change the color of the grunge, then head over to this color ramp and play around with the values. See if I change this to blue, then everything will change accordingly. If we go back out, I can swap back over to the paid version and you can immediately see the difference in detail. It allows for more realism than the free version, and if you were to dive into the nodes, there's a lot more for you to play around with. As I also stated, the muck mask is available as an output, so we can plug that in to see the white on black results and have it change with the parameters. If you wanted it to be black on white instead, then you can of course just use an invert node on the output. So yeah, that's a quick look at the updates and the new free version. Feel free to take a look at it if you're interested. I'm very keen on continuing to make node-based tools like this, because I know that I will personally find them very useful in my own work. There's a bit of a sneak peek for another one that I'm working on if we look to the left here, but I'll share more about that when it's ready. Of course, while playing around with all this stuff, I end up with all kinds of unused material experiments, so I've started making them available to the patrons under the $5 tier. Regarding this, Assorted Materials Volume 1 is now available on the site. Okay, so let's take a moment to talk about EasyBPY. This is the project I announced a little while ago to simplify the use of the Python API for Blender. I'm happy to say this project has been growing very well. We have a nice collection of collaborators adding new functionality. There's a rudimentary and still very work in progress documentation on the GitHub wiki. There's still a lot to do, but the module now contains a wide range of functions for all kinds of transformations, giving you shortcuts that regular BPY doesn't provide, like scaling perpendicular to certain axes, moving things along local or global transforms easily with single commands, there's also driver and keyframe setting, all manner of object contexts allowing functions to accept both single objects and lists of objects, either strings or object references. I've recently been adding some features for automatic organization of the content of blend files. For example, the outliner, in one command you'll be able to sort your messy scenes into beautifully presented collections. And I'm hoping to add a quick converter for these barbarian .001 suffixes into elegant underscore number suffixes instead. These last two features aren't available in the module yet, but they will be soon. It's also very easy to create and modify material nodes in plain English now, which is lovely. This month has been a great opportunity to consider where to add new features. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Jay Yoshi and 3D Bubble, who have been contributing their time for the project. Head on over to the GitHub page if you want to give it a try. The module is also available on Gumroad and the Blender Market. 
Please watch the original video if you want a more thorough introduction on how it works and the thinking process behind the project. Since we've been talking about nodes, there's a couple of things I want to share before we close this up. As I'm sure you're aware, it's node season and November is in full effect. We're not even halfway through this month and in my opinion, the results this year have blown last years out of the water. If you're interested in taking part, then make sure to give my last video a watch because it's sure to give you a good dose of inspiration. And if you're on the flip side of that coin and feel intimidated or even annoyed by the daily node-waving narcissistic vanity contest tweet fest, then your sentiment is shared by Mark and 3D, who has created a funny animated short appropriately titled Screw You November. But it's all in jest, and all of this work is really cool to see. It's really nice that the number of participants seems to be growing every year as well. So yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. Feel free to grab a copy of the free version of the Ambient Grunge node, and if you think it would be useful to you, consider supporting me by getting the full version as well. Make sure to do all the things YouTubers usually ask you to do, blah blah blah, like and subscribe, ring the bell. Actually, I do really need your interaction, apparently YouTube hates it when you send people away from the website, and a huge part of this channel is about pointing people to exciting resources. So yes, I really appreciate all the support. Consider popping over to our Discord if you like taking part in discussions, challenges, and sharing your work. Have a great day everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.